I just recorded this clip and I wasn't even recording on the mic. Why? My throat is a little bit scratchy and I'm afraid I'm getting sick. I can't be sick. I've got too many things to do. Today is a beautiful snowy day, but honestly it's already finished snowing and now it's just gonna turn all to slush. It's melting really quickly. <laughs> Why can't I just enjoy a snow day? Um, I was in Belize for two months and that's like prime snow times apparently and this is a late severe winter storm and it was not severe at all so love that also i did my nails in like a nude last night and i never do nude because i hate like i feel like it looks very odd with my complexion so i don't know if i like it or not Anyways, so I want to go out, enjoy the little bit of snow that's currently melting out there. Um, I have to go to the post office to mail out a book. I'm selling some of my books. Uh, it's very painful, but a couple of special editions that I wanted to sell. One that I pre-ordered and then was like, actually, I don't really care about this book anymore. And I'm sure that there are people out there that would really love to have a special edition of this. So... I sold that one and I got the payment for it, but the person didn't send me their address, so I'll have to send that out another time. But I gotta send this one that I have right now. So I'm gonna go to the post office, and you know, since I have to leave the house, I might as well go to a bookstore. You're really pulling my arm every time. I was in Belize for two months, okay? I was deprived of bookstores, so now I just go at every opportunity I have. I'm also in a very weird reading mood. I. I'm in the middle of so many books, A Gathering of Shadows, The Darkening, Dayboy, there was a oh, City of Stardust, like so, in between so many of these books, but I don't really feel like reading any of them right now. I also have some books that I'm long-term in the middle of on my Kindle that I want to read, like City of Gods and Monsters, A Fate Inked in Blood, which I think I'll just read that next week. I'm supposed to be taking part in a read-along of Court of Blood and Bindings right now. It just started yesterday. Anyways, I don't know what to read and I don't know what like kind of mood I'm in. So let's go to a bookstore just to be surrounded by books and get the reading vibes, you know? <laughs> you know, not necessarily to buy a book, but just to be surrounded by them. So let's do that. I also packed my journaling stuff because my like goal intention with my rework of my journaling, journaling, commonplacing, changing the notebook size and method and things um, was so that I could, you know, write more, take it out with me, write at cafes or whatever. So I already had a pencil case with my journaling supplies that I used once. And so I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, you know what, I really should be trying to do that more. Like I originally said that I was going to. Maybe we'll go to a cafe, maybe we won't. We'll see the vibes because I'm currently procrastinating very much leaving my apartment right now. And I also am over the bangs. I don't regret doing the bangs, but I just... I'm tired of having them in my face. Like, it's causing sensory problems. Anyways, let's go to post office and bookstore. <laughs>
I've got hunting home. Gotten. I have arrived home. I have eaten dinner. And now <laughs> I need to decide what to read. Here are the contenders. The Longest Autumn. I saw it at the bookstore the other day, a couple weeks ago now, and I can't stop thinking about it. But the book costs like $30 to buy it physically, like $12 on Kindle. And there's an audio book, but it's only available on Audible, meaning it's not in my library and it's not in Everand. I'm sure. You can buy it on, like audiobooks.com or something, but and I like the reviews are just very not informative. Is it good? Is it not? Should I read it? Should I should I buy it? I don't know. And then all of a sudden today at the bookstore I saw the Fl Fox Glove King, which I kind of forgot to look into when it came out. I read For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, but I didn't really like it. I thought it was way overhyped for what it turned out to be and I yeah but didn't mean that I wrote off the author so I am interested in reading the Fox Glove King but then again the reviews are just like is it good is it not should I spend my audible credit on that <laughs> and the third book 
I have in mind is Slaying the Vampire Conqueror by Carissa Broadbent. I really enjoyed Daughter of No Worlds. I really enjoyed that book, but her book Serpent and the Wings of Night got really, really popular, but I didn't like it as much as everybody else did. Like, I didn't think it was like as good as Daughter of No Worlds, and I had a lot of problems with it. So I was like, let me read another book by her. It's like Vampire Conqueror, and I have gotten a few chapters in on my Kindle, but I just started reading other things instead. But the audiobook came out uh, today, so should I get that one? So it's either Slaying the Vampire Conqueror, The Foxglove King, or The Longest Autumn. The Longest Autumn just sounds fun. It's about like this woman who has to ferry the Autumn King, no, I don't know, uh, person through the world in order to bring Autumn and then something happens and they get stuck in a certain world. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but it sounds good, okay? Believe me. And the Fox Glove King is about uh, an orphan? When Laura was 13, she escaped a cult in the catacombs beneath the city. Ten years later, she's lived by one rule, don't let them find you, easier said than none. She has death magic, something happens, and then she gets wrapped up in a world of something. I am such a good book content maker. <laughs> Laura is thrust into the sainted king's glittering court where no one can be believed and even fewer can be trusted. Guarded by Gabriel, a duke turned monk, and casually running up against Vestian, Laura tangles in... Does that mean there's a love triangle? You know I hate a love triangle. I don't know. I will look at some more reviews and then make my decision. And I'm sure I will let you guys know. going to start the foxglove king and it didn't come down to which one sounded the best but more so which one i could get and i haven't been able to figure out how to listen to a book with spotify but it's on there so i will try the spotify audiobook thing and then i think i will probably get slang the vampire conqueror with my last audible credit
This is literally so stupid. I don't recommend using Spotify for audiobooks. There's, how, how much is this? Uh, nine minutes left of this audiobook. And it won't, it won't let me finish it. Cause I've used up the hours for allotted. Like, what? Are you? Ugh. Anyways, I'm just gonna say I finished this book. God. Okay, so I finished more or less Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. Technically, I guess I didn't finish it, but you know what? Um, maybe tomorrow, if I'm feeling up to it, I'll go to the bookstore and finish it there. Oh my gosh, my throat. That, that Spotify thing is literally so stupid. Foxglove King. Mm, it wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. It was digestible. <laughs> it sounds really bad, but it just... Okay, the pros were that the magic was cool, you know, the death magic, the mortem that it was called. Oh my god, can this book stay open? Like our main character and the kind of magic she had and the way that it was awakening, but it just, it didn't quite feel full. But another thing that I liked was kind of the world, the catacombs, like the idea of that and, you know, magical things being hidden inside them. And that adds good depth to a world, I think. The whole thing with the gods and the light and dark and balance, that's cool. Um, but it just wasn't harnessed, perhaps? <laughs> harnessed well? It just wasn't fully there for me. Neither the intrigue. I just wasn't interested in it. I wasn't like attached to it. I didn't feel like, oh, there's a big mystery and what's going on or what's gonna happen, you know? I like wasn't convinced. And then my like, biggest ugh about the book is the romance. The description very much was like, this is a lush, epic, romantic fantasy. Um, no. First of all, it was a love triangle. Let me insert this review that I saw on Goodreads um, just now. Wish I had seen this review before I read the book. But this book really could have done a polyamorous relationship well. A little, a little three-way. It would have worked so well because my problems with polyamorous relationships in other books that I've read or have wanted to read and didn't continue them was that those kinds of relationships always felt kind of skewed in a way. Like top-heavy, bottom-heavy. No, that's not a good analogy. <laughs> like two people were more into it than the third or whatever. This could have worked for that because it didn't only make the like interest on the girl. I felt like there could have been interest between the two guys. It could have been, it, it could have been a contender. But apparently this was a love triangle and it wasn't even a good one. By the end of it, I was just like, there just shouldn't have been like a romance factor at all and it would have been fine. It didn't like add to the story, didn't add to the stakes or the feelings, any kind of romantic motivations any of the characters could have had could have just been platonic at the end. I didn't think the romance was done well. I don't like that I was kind of fooled into this love triangle. I just, I didn't think that it needed it like at all. So I don't know. I give this a three stars, a 2.5. I'll sit it at a three and give it a little more thought, fully finish it like the last few pages. Okay, well, that's another book down for February. I think it's just my third of the month. I wasn't reading there for a second, but also I think this book is a adult or new adult fantasy, but this really could have been a YA. Obviously, I don't know if the, the 
future books will have explicit content in it. It was written very much like a YA, the st storytelling was very much like a YA, and the only thing I would say would make it not YA is if there's spice smut in the next book, but, but maybe if you're more intro into fantasy, this might be a good- I don't know. I don't know what you like, I don't know what you want. Don't ask me. Moving on swiftly, I'm going to start or pick back up the slaying of the vampire conqueror i i will start it from the beginning but if i'm too like i already know what's going on like i don't need this refresher then i'll just skip to whatever chapter it was that i had stopped reading it at which wasn't too far in but you never know slaying the vampire conqueror it's only available in audible sense why? slaying the vampire conqueror Re why does it keep doing that recently when i click on a new book it just does it at one time speed and it's so unnerving to me. Performed by Natalie Cobb. This audiobook contains mature subject matter. Listener discretion is advised. Okay. Hope this one's good. I need a good book. I feel like I haven't read like a, oh my god, this was amazing in a while since, um, Br no, I read Bride. That was good. The last two books that I read felt really long. Excuse me, you're on my pajamas. I do it to disturb you. very much like a coffee right now and my sister sent me a gift card to get coffee yesterday but I was in too much pain so do I get a coffee now even though I'm sick I'm so annoyed that I'm sick I <laughs> like do not want to be sick we hate being sick no cuddles when I'm sick so upsetting ew, ew. I just finished slaying the vampire conqueror 
colonizer vibes no i really enjoyed it i my faith has been restored in you cursa i really liked it i thought the main character is very i love any fantasy book when our female main character is already powerful like she already knows how to use her magic already has a strong sense of self like it's one thing to you know have a character that is growing and becoming somebody and that's the story we're following but i feel like that's so, always so many of the stories that we read so i like having one that's already has a sense of self established but obviously they're gonna grow in other ways and change in other ways in the story um but i just like it i'm so good I really enjoyed it. She's clever and powerful. Of course, religious deconstruction I love in books when they do that. Like only one other one comes to mind that I've read. I'm sure there might have been another one, but religious deconstruction cult vibes that I read was The Viridian Priestess. I read that last year. It's a sci-fi. I included that in the list of romanticies them that I did for a post yesterday for Valentine's Day. But yeah, anyways, back to the book. I enjoyed it. I would recommend reading it. It's vampires. It's got a very strong magic system. It's a quick book, but I feel like everything is flushed out really well. So, so far in as I, um, what am I trying to say? During the read, I didn't feel like anything was lacking. I am ultimately giving it a five out of five stars. Woo. I will update my reading journal right now, but I feel so sick right now. I forgot that I had something to complain about, about the audiobook narrator from the book yesterday the fox Glue of king the narrator for some reason maybe this is the pronunciation guide i don't know but <sighs> there's a character called king here see it on the screen the narrator would say a goose and sometimes it sounded like she was just saying a goose why was that decision made why was a goose the the direction that was chosen not august there are people that are named August that you pronounce their name August, not August. Um, and it's just straight, straight up written August. There's no like inflections. <laughs> it just sounded horrible. Speaking of, this narrator of Slaying a Vampire Conqueror didn't love her either. Some of the ways that she, the inflections she chose for some of the, um, what's it called? Dialogue? Um, no, I wasn't a fan. <laughs> I've listened to so many audiobooks at this point. I find it a little bit easier to pu push through narrators that I don't necessarily um, agree with their stylistic choices, but there have been times where I just cannot at all listen. I, I basically kind of made myself a little TBRs because the next thing I would like to start is The Longest Autumn. Is that what it's called? I have to sign up for a free trial and then I'll start listening to it. Yeah, so <laughs> my bad. I can't sleep. I'm I'm so, feel so sick.
Okay, I had a horrible night. So well, I, I couldn't go to sleep. Like I felt so sick. This is the weirdest sickness I've had. Like I got sick, my throat hurt. I was going through the motions, but it wasn't like taking over my entire body. And now that um, it's coming out, like all the mucus and everything, which normally means like you're at the end of the sickness, like it's gonna be over soon because you're getting it all out, right? Now it has hit me really hard. <laughs> I don't even and so I couldn't even sleep last night because I was so uncomfortable and I also my back really hurt from my cramps Ugh, so annoying but anyways that meant that I read the longest autumn in one sitting the longest autumn I give it a five out of five stars I really enjoyed it it is a little bit slower it is a bit more meandering but I think that that was a good part of the story it added to it this takes place in autumn and is the longest autumn where the woman the herald who ferries autumn the god autumn into the human world to bring autumn and then the mirror portal thing that they go through into the human world breaks and so they blame her because you know religious culty vibe they are not very loving <laughs> and so the, the the human world gets stuck in autumn for I can't tell you, that'd be a spoiler. <laughs> and the longer that the god of autumn stays in the human world, he becomes more human, becomes more mortal. It's very dangerous for the gods to stay in the human world. So they're trying to fix this mirror and, you know, the main character turn, she's facing a lot of prejudice and also trying to figure out what happened, solving this mystery. So the intrigue I thought was really such a hook for me. I just needed to know what happened. And so I ended up basically, uh, reading this in one sitting but also like if I wasn't sick what I have I don't know it was pretty compelled like I needed to know I just wanted to know how everything was going to work out or where it was going to take you because it just kept getting like the fall from grace just kept going you know I thought it was interesting living in the world of this uh what is it called like religious complex I don't even know what to call it it's not a monastery but you know the vibe and the myth and the lore of these gods and the seasons was really interesting and how they're acolytes for each season so you're kind of in like a little club a little house <laughs> another thing that I really appreciate about this book is that the romance slash feelings slash relationships weren't so straightforward it was very complex very convoluted it wasn't like trying to make you like root for one person or I don't know it just felt very mature and I could really appreciate it. This felt like a true adult book. I feel like I haven't read a lot. Like, there's nothing wrong with um, books that are labeled adult and have, you know, very common tropes and they feel like a lot of other books. There's nothing wrong with that because those are very enjoyable and I enjoy them very much. But this just felt a lot different in those aspects. And I really appreciated it. I really enjoyed this book. I think it would be perfect to read for Autumn. Um, I also don't know how much I liked our main character, Turn. I don't know if I liked her or not. I don't think that was the point of us to like get to like her or whatever. I think we were just following her story. And I enjoyed it, okay? <laughs> I just have like certain feelings about this book that I can't properly articulate. But so yeah, that's all. I read the three books that I set out to. Well, I didn't really set out to read them in this video in the beginning, but there were three books on the roster and I did it. Woohoo! <laughs>